We have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. The strongest argument in favor of the gospel is a loving and lovable Christian. The things of nature are the Lord's silent ministers given to us to teach us spiritual truths. They speak to us of the love of God and declare the wisdom of the great master artist. Morning exercise, walking in the free, invigorating air of heaven, or cultivating flowers, small fruits, and vegetables, is the surest safeguard against colds, coughs, congestion of the brain, inflammation of the liver, the kidneys, and the lungs, and a hundred other diseases. Unceasing prayer is the unbroken union of the soul with God, so that life from God flows into our life. And from our life, purity and holiness flow back to God, who can measure the love Christ felt for a lost world, as he hung upon the cross, suffering for the sins of guilty men. This love was immeasurable. It was infinite. Remember that you will never reach a higher standard than you yourself set. Then set your mark high and step by step, even though it be by painful effort, by self-denial and sacrifice, ascend the whole length of the ladder of progress. The closer you come to Jesus, the more faulty you will appear in your own eyes for your vision will be clearer, and your imperfections will be seen in broad and distinct contrast to his perfect nature. Why should the sons and daughters of God be reluctant to pray, when prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse, where are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence? When music is allowed to take the place of devotion and prayer, it is a terrible curse. Young people assemble together to sing, and although professed Christians, frequently dishonor why the Christian life is so difficult to many is because they have a divided heart. They are double-minded, which makes them unstable in all their ways. We are all woven together in the great web of humanity, and whatever we can do to benefit and uplift others will reflect in blessing upon ourselves. True love is a high and holy principle, altogether different in character from that love which is awakened by impulse and which suddenly dies when severely tested. True love is not a strong, fiery, impetuous passion. It is, on the contrary, an element calm and deep. It looks beyond mere externals and is attracted by qualities alone. It is wise and discriminating and its devotion is real and abiding. Look up, look up and let your faith continually increase. Let this faith guide you along the narrow path that leads through the gates of the city into the great beyond, the wide, unbounded future of glory that is for the redeemed. All spiritual things are to be treated with sacred dignity. Humility and meekness are in accordance with the life of Christ but they are to be shown in a dignified way. All who in this world render true service to God or man receive a preparatory training in the school of sorrow. The weightier the trust and the higher the service, the closer is the test and the more severe the discipline. There is no exercise that can take the place of walking. 
By it, the circulation of the blood is greatly improved. Walking, in all cases where it is possible, is the best remedy for the diseased bodies, because in this, all of the organs of the body are brought into use.